Hello, welcome to this video. We're going to talk a bit about more about the Unreal side of things. I've already here created a few elements and I will go through them in a moment. So the first thing is, of course, import your mesh. So I have already done that and I want to make sure that you here uh, replace the vertex color so, or import vertex color. Sometimes the default might be ignore. That means that your vertex color that we created in Houdini will not be imported. So make sure it's set to replace. So we're actually importing that data. Now, once that is done, we will also need to make these curves and I will talk a bit more in a moment why. Uh, so let's maybe start with a material. So material, for example, terrain. And let's here open that. And we're just going to simply apply the vertex color like this and press save. And if we would apply this um, into our mesh, so if we should see the same results as we had in Houdini. So if you follow everything along the video, you will have the same results like you would see here. If you remember, I stored some data like the water data and so on, uh, and the flow data. And in the green channel, I stored the sort of like a lava data. So let's now preview the lava data like so. And you can see now we have that uh, mesh or the mask here for the lava, basically. And that's where I'm going to actually use the curves that I've created. So if you right click, go to the miscellaneous tab, you have curve and curve atlas. So we want to make sure we have some of these curves here created. So we've already done that. So, so here we can create a simple uh, curve data. And we need to link our, link our curve in here as well, just so we are sure. And here is the curve. And here is the curve asset itself. So here I took some uh, colors like in Houdini. So if you remember in Houdini, we used this black body gradient. And I basically remade that here in Unreal as well. So I took some of the colors that I had in, in Houdini and sort of like replicated that here. So you can also look into Houdini what the values are. And we just recreate that here in this map. So we can, so we can simply add uh, a key and then change the value here. So I'm not going to change that too much because I'm quite happy with the color. So we go from this white, yellow, red, brownish, and then darkish colors. So we have a nice gradient between that. So this is sort of like a nice lava gradient. So this color gradient will be used for uh, this mask that you see right now. So when a value is darker, we will use darker colors. When a value is lighter, we will use lighter colors. And that automatically will create like a lava coloring and it will be controlled by the neural. So make sure the curve is of course linked here in your other curve asset. They need to be sort of like linked to each other. So you can here say add curve gradient, click on the plus icon and add another one. Then once that is set up, we can go into the shader and we can just type in curve. And there is something which is called the curve atlas. Then in this curve atlas, we need to use our setup that we had. So here I already made that curve data and we're now linking that in here. So the only thing we need to do is here plug in the data like so and press apply. And we should now see a result like this. So it's now being colored by that data. We can always uh, modify the data a bit. So we can also multiply, for example, the data like here. We can then right click and then say promote parameter and then say like color uh, multiplier or something. Or gradient control is actually a better name. And the default value should be one. And playing around now with this value, um, we should we can now see that we can control here that effect better and better. So this could be something they could play around with. I also recommend actually using the emissive for lava, so the emissive channel, and pressing save. We we'll actually now have that emissive glow. So you can see the the sides here also have that light. So that's a very simple way of quickly doing some coloring based on the on the gradient ramp. You don't have to do it this way. There are many other ways. You can do simple lerping and things like that. Uh, but this is one way of doing it with the gradients. Now becomes the more, I think, yes, complicated part is the is unpacking the data that we stored previously here. So if I here press apply, we save this very specific data about the flow. And now let's try to break that down again. So you need to remember a few things that we did from Houdini. If you first thing, if you remember, we basically clamped the, an amount of degrees, which is 360 degrees. So from zero to 360 degrees, we clamped that to zero to one range. That means we need to basically multiply that value back. So it's going to grab the zero to one range and just simply say multiplied by 360 
degrees. So now we have that range again. So we now we go instead of from zero to one, we go back from zero to 360 degrees. Then we also removed uh, 180 degrees of that. So we're going to do a subtraction. And we're going to say subtract or we're going to do 180 subtract from that value because now we can go into the negative and the positive directions like the original Houdini values had. Um, then a cool thing you can also do is actually use an add node and this will be the flow control and I will call it direction control. So in Unreal we can actually modify the directions manually here with this so we can rotate this by an amount of degrees which in a moment we might see. Then I'm actually using like a custom uh, shader node here and typing in some code. The code itself won't be that complicated. So, so first thing, first thing we want to set up is here probably one of the inputs. So we have an input data which we're gonna call angle. This is just simply here, as you can see, this is basically the data that we pass on like this. So this is the angle data, and the reason for that is because now in code I can reference this. Now I'm quickly opening Visual Code here just so you can see it a bit better. So uh, what we'll type is we're going to create a float called our angle in uh, radians. So angle radians equals um, or the radians, radians from our angle. So we need to convert our degrees back to radians because the functions to convert the data further needs to be in radians because we will now have a float called x, uh, which is the cosinus of that angle radians like so and then we of course need a float called uh, y and this is then the sign of this I can just copy paste it like so and that's almost it so the only thing left to do is return the value so return a value called a flow 2 and this flow 2 holds um, the y and x position data and that's basically what I wanted to type. And this is the same thing that we actually done in Houdini. Uh, so we calculated uh, the, the radians and the degrees based on the cosines and sinus. So here now in this menu, we remove the one and we paste in our own value. And if everything went right, it should have no issues. What is called a flow map uh, node. We can use the default Unreal flow map tool. And you're going to probably make some more room here. And the data that we calculated is basically uh, the flow vector. What we can do here as well is actually multiply this by a number. Um, so we can say like promote this value and then we can say a vector or flow, maybe I call it flow, flow multiplier. And maybe for now, let's set it to a smaller value. Let's set it pretty small because this could be maybe too much and let's say flow factor here then we also need to have our textures so we're going to create a, a texture object so we have our uh, diffuse and our normal map then we can also have some other elements like time and uv scaling but let's see what this already gives us uh, so if we save this uh, or maybe in better let's also output here maybe it isn't too emissive and let's save this result now. Oh yeah, so one more mistake that I've made is uh, I forgot to set the output type to flow2. So just a small mistake on my side um, because it's expecting a flow3, so it needs to be flow2 because we made in flow2, of course. That's why we might have a small error. So if we save that, we should be able to see uh, here, as you can see, like very specific movements of that flow data. So you can see that in some cases, you can see a very generic flow, like it just goes to the left or to the right. But in where the parts where we actually have the lava, you can see it has like a very specific way of moving things around. And that's because it's actually now using that data that we provided uh, on the on the mesh. So the only thing left is sort of like mask uh, certain parts out and multiply them with each other. So we have our main color and we can multiply our main color with our texture just to have some more variations or you can do other things if you want to but we can for example simply multiply these by each other once they are multiplied we can also do a lerping we can lerp based on our green channel which is the lava mask 
and we just plug it in like so and we can do save and let's see what that gives us so you can see we now have this lava specifically here in these areas where we want it to be so again it, this is like a bit of like art direction and polishing we can make all these parameters and sliders to as you can see to boost these things and lower them um we can also use this value um here we can use this multiplier and hook it up to the lerp as well because then that it will then boost the general value of that as well so if i boost now this you can see we can have a very intense flow in there or we can keep it very subtle or you can even animate this over time when it like animates like this as well um so you can see we can create some really cool results with that that's sort of like the main i guess id behind the setup and then the other vertex colors that we still have left uh, could be used to then further enhance some of the other terrain uh, coloration so let's simply lerp here the blue channel so the blue channel was like the detail sides i'm also going to maybe for the roughness set this 2.8 or something so we can actually have get rid of the roughness for now just then further maybe let's get some colors maybe we have something that's a bit like this and another one that's maybe a bit more grayish like so let's see what that gives us and let's apply and now we have something like this so again not perfect so now it becomes the uh, ideally i would actually imp input some textures of course like if you have a bunch of textures like from mega scans or parts we can plug in some cool textures but here uh, we can of, of course also do a promote to parameter uh, promote to parameter and now i can uh, fine tune this a bit here uh, a bit better in real time so now we have something like so which looks pretty cool uh, and then we have our general terrain so we can make it, I guess, something like this, where it's maybe has a little bit red, darkish colors. And that's sort of how you can like start to iterate on this material. Like again, I'm not going to go into full details. You have the main ideas about how to now plug in your own materials, textures, and make this material a bit better. Uh, but we have the main effect basically working now here where the lava is flowing. So you can also use different textures for the lava or improve other elements here and there. So now we have a really interesting lava scene or lava in or uh, in Unreal now. But I hope you learned something new here. I hope you learned something interesting here to work with some nice simulations of Houdini with Nanite, uh, transferring the data into Vertex Explorer, bringing it here nicely together in Unreal. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.